This geological map is inspired by an area in the uh, French Swiss Alps. Um, and there's quite a lot of topography in here. The topography is shown by these brown contours and they go up to 3,000 meters here and down below uh, 1,400 meters down on this corner down in here. So there's uh, one and a half kilometers of relief. And we can use this relief to build up a 3D understanding of the geological structure here. We can divide the map up really across a diagonal line running from northeast to southwest. And the ground down in this area consists of these units in here, which are metasediments, granite diorite, and granite. So sort of hard rock, basement rocks down in here. And then a series of sedimentary rocks forming a cover sequence that runs over on this side of the map, which includes a tectonic contact running through. So there's a contact here that lies along the edge of the basement that forms an unconformity at the base of the cover series. And that's the surface we want to try and understand. So we'll pick this out and then draw some structure contours on it. So let's just highlight that boundary. So we've highlighted the boundary running through the landscape like this and the next task is to draw some structure contours. There are various places we can start but a good place is down here where the boundary intersects a number of topographic contours. Well let's just pick a few. Well I can see here that the contact comes across this contour here twice. That's the 2600 meter contour so we can pick a couple of points on here where the boundary intersects 2600 and we follow the boundary along we can see it just cuts across here intersecting these two points and we can join these up to make a structure contour running like this through this small part of the map we'll project it on in a minute let's find another so if we come down here we can see that the boundary intersects the topographic contour of 2,400. We come back around, we can see it intersect there, and there, and there. So again, we can join these up to make a structure contour of value 2,400 meters. So I'll just label these. That's 2,400, and that's 2,600 meters. So let's zoom out and find some other parts of the boundary on the map. So I can trace the boundary around here across Grand Lac. And if we come into this area, we can see the boundary climbs up this hillside and down the other. So this is a pretty good place to try and tie in some more structure contours. Let's go into there and have a closer look. So in this position, we can trace the boundary up from the side of the lake up to the hill top in here and down the other side. As it does so, the boundary crosses this little patch here, which is at 2,600. So we've got a 2,600 pick here, which we can simply project a little bit like this for now. And we can see coming down the hillside here and on this side, in, in this position in here, we can see the boundary intersects the 2,400 a couple of times here like this and further down still we can see it intersect the 2200 here can we find it on the other side oh yes we can here so there's a structure contour coming around something like this through here i'm curving them a bit so that they diverge around let's try and trace them over to the other side to this next bit of hill across this valley and we can find the 2400 there and there so we can whiz this around like this, and then you keep these lines straight. They can gently curve as the strike swings. So there is the 2,400 structure contour. And of course, it's gonna come over to here and join the other side in a minute, which we'll just do. 2,200 goes out through here like that. 
and to here like that. So it's coming around, swinging around, something like that. So let's zoom out and put these two outcrop areas together. Okay, so let's try and join some of this up. So I'm gonna take the 2400, which is here, and link it across through here like this to link up with the 2400 that we connected before. Just label that 2400. Do the same here, just tweak that a bit like this. And this is the 2600 running across high above the lake to run into this hillside down here. So that's 2600. Can we do anything with the 2200? Well, we can, we can take the boundary here. There's 2200 on the other side of Grand Lac. We had it over here. So we can take that across like this and it's gonna dive into the subsurface beneath this ground. And we can even put in the 2000 meter contour here and here. So those are gonna come through sort of like that, through that ground and on in the subsurface, following the trend of the structure contours we've drawn so far. So we're able to predict, therefore, where this unconformity is beneath these hills here and beneath here by projecting the structure contours in, following the trend of the ones we've constructed from outcrop. Okay, so what can we use these structure contours for, apart from making forecasts of where the unconformity goes beneath the mountains? Well, we can use the separation and spacing of the contours in here to establish the dip of the unconformity, and we can use the trend of the structure contours to tell us about its strike. Well, the strike's the easiest thing, so let's do that first. So simply, we need to measure the bearing of the Trend of the structure contours relative to north. North is given by the grid line. So we just put a protractor on the grid lines like that and look at the angle. In here, I can read that off and it says 036 as a bearing. So the strike here is of a bearing 036, so 36 degrees around from north. So I'll just make a note of that. We can write that in Grand Lac, shall we? 036, and it's clearly dipping from here, which is an elevation of 2,600 down to 2,000 meters, so high to low, so it's dipping off towards the northwest. But how much? Well, that's we've got to calculate. Okay, so we're gonna use some simple trigonometry and we're gonna measure the separation between the 2,600 meter contour and the 2,000 meter contour in a direction perpendicular to the strike. So in other words, in this direction here. So we're gonna simply take a piece of paper and measure that distance as a horizontal distance. In other words, in map view from the 2,600 meter to the 2,000 meter contour. And what is that distance? We'll take it up here to the scale bar and we're slightly over a kilometer. Let's call it, what? Well, that's about 1200 meters, isn't it? So 1200 meters there. So what we're saying is that over a horizontal distance of 1200 meters, there's been an elevation change in the unconformity of 600 meters. So there, is our trigonometry. The angle of dip here, tan alpha is gonna be equal to 600 divided by 1200, which as it happens is 0.5. So let's just look up what the arctan of 0.5 might be. So if you look it up in a set of tables or on a calculator, you can find that the arctan of 0.5 is essentially 26 and a half degrees. So that is the dip of the unconformity. Let's add that to our diagram here. We'll call that 26 degrees. 
There's obviously some uncertainty in that. It's probably an estimate that's, as, that's good for a degree or two. So the, and the strike is pretty well constrained through here, give or take a degree. So that's a pretty neat way of finding the orientation on a regional scale of a planar surface, in this case, the unconformity. So let's go a bit further. We can use this information and look a bit more at the stratigraphy because above the unconformity is this layer here, which is the Triassic. And we can estimate now the thickness of the Triassic using its outcrop width. And a great place to calculate outcrop width is using where the unconformity and the top of the trias come down to a single surface, not the planar surface that's horizontal, in other words, water level in Grand Lac. So let's do this calculation here. Let's zoom in and have a look. So I'm just gonna use a color here to avoid confusion with the structure contours and pick the base of the unconformity or the unconformity surface here and tie it up across the loft there, matching side to side there. So that, line represents the unconformity, the base of the trias at the level of the lake. And let's put in the top, which here is this tectonic contact. And again, we'll draw this straight across the loch like this. And it's parallel, more or less, within scribble uncertainty to the base of the trias. So that's the outcrop width of the trias. So I noticed that uh, comedy, I was referring to this as the loch, but of course it's a lake because it's in France. Let's measure the outcrop width here. It's that distance there between the base and the top of the trias. And now we just take this measurement and read it off the scale bar. So let's just do that. Put this up next to the scale bar. And I think within, within the measuring area on that, let's call that a quarter of a kilometer. So that's 250 meters. And now we can set up the trigonometry. Here we go. We've got rocks that are dipping this way down to the northwest. And we know the outcrop width is 250 meters. And we also know that the dip here, which we'd worked out before, is 26 degrees in there. And we're trying to find the outcrop width, or use the outcrop width rather, to find the true thickness of the unit. Well, the sine of 26 degrees is 0.44. We multiply that by 250, we get our thickness T. And that, simple bit of sums on this, that's going to come out at mm, 110 meters. So the thickness of the trias is 110 meters. So, some simple ways of using structure contours to find out fairly precisely the orientation of a boundary and to work out a thickness of a unit, assuming of course that it remains constant thickness. We could perform that calculation again in other places to see how well that assumption uh, works out. So by applying structure contours and some simple trigonometry, we can establish something about the structure of an area and to get some idea of stratigraphic thicknesses.